Hello friends, it's Luke the Gamer Duke, and in Diablo 2 Resurrected, I'm doing another installment of Keep or Yeet, but we're doing Versus Edition. I have two unique early exceptional one-handers here, Shershrill Frost Fling Mace, and Cold Steel Eye Cutlass, both with great affixes, and both relatively close to each other in terms of damage. Say you come across both, which is better, by what metric and by how much, and how far do these weapons realistically go? Let's find out. Cold Steel Eye is the unique Cutlass, the exceptional version of a Scimitar, which comes with 20% added attack speed, and with the Cutlass's AS already being very fast, this increases it even more. 200 to 250% enhanced damage, mine unfortunately is on the lower end, 6% mana leech, 50% deadly strike, which is a chance for double damage, hit blinds target, and slows target by 30%. These are mega awesome affixes for any slasher. Sure Shrill is the unique flanged mace, the exceptional of a regular mace, and its affixes include 150-180% to 180 enhanced damage, again mine is a bit shafted on that front, adds another 5-10 to 10 base damage, a whopping 63-112 to 112 cold damage, why it just couldn't be rounded to 65-115 to 115, I'm not sure. Freezes target for up to 3 seconds, you cannot be frozen, gives you 50 shots of level 9 frozen orb, and adds 50% damage to undead. Any melee swinger would greatly benefit from these. Cold Steel's damage output starts at 83 to 226, and adds great character affixes. While Shershwell outputs 189 to 345, which is much more, though the number of character affixes take a noticeable hit. As I add strength via leveling, the damage output for both will increase, but Shershrill will always do more direct damage, and Cold Steel will always have more affixes. I replaced as many of the weapon affixes from other parts of my gear as I could, such as attack speed and mana leech, to try to provide a more accurate comparison, and also to keep me alive. And if I level during an area, I save those points for the beginning of the next area, so all stats will be consistent for both weapons. Since flanged maces and cutlasses mostly begin their appearances in Act 1 and 2, we'll start there. Both weapons perform great in the catacombs, probably no surprise there. Cold Steel's base damage is slightly lacking, but its attack speed combined with its affixes make up for it greatly. When Deadly Strike connects, massive amounts of health can be hacked away, and with the crazy attack speed, it connects often. and blinding and slowing enemies was tremendously helpful for mob management. Shershrill's higher damage output smacked enemies down with ease, though I did notice some more interruptions in mob battles. Freezing enemies was great in melees, and shattering revivable enemies like Devilkins is absolutely fantastic. Though the ghouls provided a bit more difficulty without blind, since freeze doesn't last near as long. Frozen Orb is actually pretty effective here as well. With Indariel, Shershrill's damage and fast AS provided solid and predictable damage. And while Cold Steel's normal attack does do less, the Deadly Strike combined with the AS hacked her health down a bit faster. The story remains largely consistent through most of Act 2. Both weapons perform great in their own way. Starting from the Halls of the Dead, I wanted to see how the 6% mana leech on Cold Steel realistically functions. And man oh man does it function. Its attack speed is simply ridiculous. Even with the minus 50% leech in Nightmare, the attack speed makes for wicked rapid mana recovery after heavy skill usage. I was able to roam through underground areas without even thinking about mana recovery and the blind and deadly strike make for easy mob management and cleanups. I am noticing that in open areas, higher health mobs require a bit more of a single out approach due to Cold Steel's lower average damage per hit, which can lead to prolonged engagements. Shershrill's higher damage output continues to merc enemies with much less effort. Freeze is absolutely great. The ability to basically halt enemies mid-combat during mob battles and shattering skeletons, ensuring they cannot be revived, is majorly beneficial. 
Though heavy mobs can become a bit dangerous when freeze fails. And I did notice uniques were a bit tougher to get through. Frozen Orb will also continue to do some damage. Granted, I did notice I was gulping down a fair amount of mana potions in the underground areas. I dumped some points into strength to keep up my relative damage approaching the Arcane Sanctuary, with Cold Steel now outputting 118 to 324, and Sure Shrill doing 249 to 447. And here, one of these will start to pull away. Churchill definitely performs well. Damage output and freeze are still formidable and can take down and clean up enemies just fine. But it seems like Cold Steel is picking off the stragglers at a faster rate. Not by much, but enough to notice a difference. Not to mention, Churchill needed several mana potions to get through the arcane, while Cold Steel literally hacked my mana back up to full recovery. The tombs of Talrasha provided a further demonstration of the arcane. Shershrill's overall DPS is beginning to fall behind in mob engagements. Free shattering enemies is still great, but without freezing enemies I would have likely been overrun more than once. Cold Steel is simply getting through at a better rate. The amount of health that can potentially chunk off from tougher enemies continues to impress. Granted your next swing could only do a fifth of that, but the next swing might do as much as the one before, which all happens within fractions of a second. Not to mention, Blind continues to completely scatter mobs. Using Shurshrill, it's finally gotten to the point where I need to scour for mana potions. But Cold Steel stole mana as fast as I was using it. This is also where the damage of Frozen Orb starts to fall behind. And in knocking out Duriel, the AS and Deadly Strike of Cold Steel simply provided more damage per second overall. So at the end of Act 2, Cold Steel seems to have an edge. The beginning of Act 3, though, starts to tell a bit of a different story. It's Cold Steel's average damage output that's beginning to fall behind. It becomes heavily dependent on combos of higher damage and deadly strike to provide solid output, requiring many more hits to get through mobs of these little bastards. Leeching mana still proves handy, and blind and slow are still absolutely great for mob management, but the lack of damage made for prolonged cleanup sessions. Sure Shrill on the other hand, and its higher damage output is simply smashing through enemies here, to the point where some only require one hit. Shattering the revivable flares is tremendously helpful in mobs. Even Frozen Orb makes a bit of a comeback with it performing well versus the little bastards. In going through Kurost, both weapons start to show some cracks. Cold Steel's damage output continues to be highly dependent on rolls of Deadly Strike. Standing versus even smaller mobs result in prolonged engagements. Blind and Slow are wonderfully lucrative in combat, but steady damage is mostly limited to singling out enemies. When you do target them though, their health has a good chance of being hacked down fairly fast. Churchill's damage is keeping up well, and freezing enemies in combat continues its greatness. However, since freeze doesn't last near as long as blind, mob situations can become overwhelmingly dangerous, and fast. There was actually one encounter I had to switch to Cold Steel to single out the unique minions. Also, Frozen Orb is starting to fail again. However, Shershrill definitely takes the jungle, and in Karast, I think I'd prefer its more overall consistent damage. Granted, not by much. Cold Steel continues to stay alive in the Durance, with the attack speed and deadly strike still able to effectively hack out single enemies, and Blind was incredibly helpful in managing ghouls. Shershrill's damage was consistent in melees, and Freeze is still helpful but I'm noticing enemies are not freezing as often or as long. Being debuffed with cold while using Shershrill can be disastrous as it lowers the fast attack speed significantly. 
but Cold Steel was still swinging away fast enough to remain mostly unhindered. In battling Mephisto, I basically went by time. Using Shershrill, it took almost four minutes to knock him out, but Cold Steel got him in just over two and a half minutes. The deadly strike and attack speed just simply provide much better DPS. I also ran out of health potions while using Shershrill. So, Cold Steel pulls ahead just slightly. Act 4 will be the final gauntlet here. I increased some strength to up my relative damage, so Cold Steel is now doing 124 to 396, and Shershrill is rocking 262 to 520. And somehow, Cold Steel completely reintroduces itself, with the ASDS combo slashing down everything that runs up on me. Even with heavy mobs, I embrace confidence since I'm still able to blind basically everything within a couple seconds, then pick apart who I want. Granted, higher health mobs took a little extra effort. Using Shershrill, I found myself on the back foot for the majority of engagements. The damage is still decent, but decent isn't good enough in heavy mobs anymore. Even modest mobs basically rely on freezing half the enemies to stand and fight. The duration enemies stay frozen is quite limited now too. Leading the Venom Lorbs to basically roast the hell out of me whenever I'm mobbed. I found myself running away often and ran out of health potions more than once. Allow me, if you will, for a brief second, to show why Deadly Strike and Attack Speed are making such a huge difference here. We'll start with both damages. Now let's add the 50% Deadly Strike above the normal damage. And the attack speeds are fast for Sure Shrill and very fast plus 20% for Cold Steel. And an actual damage output for Sure Shrill, since it's not quite four full swings, we'll use three and three quarter strikes per second, leading to 983 to 1950 DPS. And for Cold Steel, with a full five strikes per second, making the DPS of 620 to 1980 on par with Sure Shrill. But when applying Deadly Strike, those hits can turn into a ridiculous 1240 to 3960 damage per second. So you can see how Cold Steel is outperforming Shershrill significantly here. And given all that math, the River of Flame finally broke Shershrill. I got through it, but was basically binging health potions. The DPS is barely hanging on, and solid damage on enemies is tough to come by. If not for Freeze, I would have likely been overrun way more times than I already was. At this point, progress is basically a snail's pace. Cold Steel's realistic average output is lagging a bit, but the Deadly Strike comes through often enough to be able to chop solid chunks of health away when targeting enemies. Blind, of course, comes in as the hero to scatter mobs, making mob engagements much easier to handle. If not a bit prolonged. And just for funsies, let's throw these things at Diablo and see what happens. And as expected, Shershrill was an absolute challenge to use. Hacking down health was incredibly slow going, made even more so by the number of misses. And when he throws cold on me, output is slowed even more. Battling Diablo in this fashion was quite tough. Using Cold Steel was so much different. The only thing that made this slightly annoying was simply the number of missed swings. When Deadly Strike connects, I can visibly see when the 3500 plus damage was hacked off from his health. And slowing Diablo by 30% was incredibly noticeable, making the engagement much less deadly. In comparing the times, Shershrill slayed Diablo in 4 minutes and 30 seconds, while Cold Steel got him in a full minute less, with 3 minutes and 25 seconds. Cold Steel even made it into Act 5 decently well, and in keeping your strength up, it would likely make it through most of the act. So, in returning to my original question, which is better, and by how much? Let's take a final look. Shershrill's affixes are a bit split here. The enhanced damage is solid, but I wouldn't say it's great. The added base damage could be better. The added cold damage is pretty awesome. Freezing and shattering enemies is always a great thing. 
Cannot be frozen is a good attribute, but I came across zero cold attacks or spells. I'd say it's more useful in hell mode. Orb was decent, but quite costly. We'll get into that in a second. 50% damage to undead is okay. By contrast, everything on Cold Steel is straight up awesome. Added attack speed on top of very fast. Awesome enhanced damage. 6% is pretty solid for Mana Leech. Deadly Strike speaks for itself. Blinding enemies was fantastic, and slowing bosses and higher health enemies was just as great. The number of realistically lucrative affixes and ridiculous attack speed keeps Cold Steel slashing away well past where it has any right to be. Churchill was solid for a while, there's no way around that, especially with freeze and added cold damage, and Frozen Orb proved some value, but like I said, it is very costly. It runs at almost 5,000 gold per orb, and a full recharge will set you back 247,680 gold or an ort and a chipped if you have some on hand. The 50 shots is enough to keep you going for a while, but when you do recharge, it'll be pretty rough. Overall, Shershrill simply doesn't keep up in the latter parts of Nightmare. And with all that said, Cold Steel takes the win. I'd even be so bold as to say it would be worth upgrading to the Elite version. Given the spike in base damage the Elite Autagon has over the Exceptional Cutlass, I imagine all of its affixes would continue to be just as great in Hell Mode as they were in Nightmare. So if you find yourself a unique Cutlass lying on the ground, consider your melee character in for a great time. And that means, Mr. Shershrill, thou must be yeeted. Yeet. And feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments. Was this your expected result? And have you ever upgraded Cold Steel to an Elite? I'm quite curious. If you enjoyed this analysis, consider hitting that like button. And remember to subscribe for more fun Diablo ARPG and other gameplay analytics. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.